Hello and welcome to our Bernina webinar today. We are having Boundary and Markers with Qmatic with Denise Jones. I'm Julie Bridgman. I will be your host today and I will be looking at questions that you type in in your control panel. On your screen, you should see a control panel and there is a tab that says questions. In there, if you open that up, you can type in questions and I will either respond right away or I will hold them till the end of the presentation for Denise. Uh, there will also be a recording available. So on Bernina.com, we will upload a recording in about a couple days and there will be that along with a handout. Uh, for today, if you want the handout right away, you could go into the handouts pane in the control panel and upload that. Uh, but don't worry if you don't get it uploaded today, that will be available for you later at Bernina.com. So our, like I said earlier, our presenter is Denise Jones. She is an educator with Bernina. Welcome, Denise. Thank you, Julie. Welcome everyone to our afternoon session of Boundary and Markers with Cumatic. Um, we're just gonna jump right in and get started. Um, the first thing we wanna do is we wanna talk about what boundaries are and what markers are uh, and why you would use them. So uh, a boundary is a tool in the tool center and the tool center is located on the right-hand side of your Cumatic screen. And in order to use uh, all the functionality of this tool, you need to have a safe area set. Uh, the, and the design must be selected for the boundary tool to open up. You can uh, place your designs on your quilt top using the screen of the computer or using the sew head. But when you have the sew head selected and you want to use uh, the sew head to place your design, that is, in my opinion, the best way to do it because it knows exactly where things are on your quilt because you have those crosshairs of the needle that indicates where the machine is. And so when you place the crosshairs on a point on your uh, your quilt, then you know exactly where it is so that your uh, four points can uh, be placed it correctly at correctly at the right spot. It does need four points. Like I said, um, you uh, can't use three, you can't use five. And so right now at this time, you have to use four points to get this uh, design placed into this area. You can go clockwise or you can go counterclockwise around the block to uh, place the points. When you click or touch the screen on the first placement point, you will see nothing on the screen. Uh, and then when you get to the second one, uh, you'll see the lines start to form because there's no way to show just one point. Once you get the uh, four point set and you have four sides to your block, uh, when you confirm it uh, with the check mark in the green box on the screen, then that boundary box goes away. So you know that you can preview that before you confirm. So that would make you know uh, for sure you have it in the right place. The selected design can be morphed to fit or it can maintain its ratio. When you morph to fit, it will change its size and its shape to fit into the boundary, the four-sided shape you gave it to fit into. When you have maintain ratio selected, you still have to have the four-sided shape, but it will resize itself, maintaining its proportion or maintaining its ratio to fit within the parameters that you gave it. So just so you know, for sure, we'll just make a little note. We are working in version 2.03.01 uh, right now. That is the most current version of Cumatic, and that's what we're working with now. Uh, you have to always have four points when setting a boundary, whether you're maintaining the ratio or you're morphing to fit, you still have to have four points defined for that. And like I said earlier, the uh, morph to fit feature will change the shape and the size of the design and the maintain ratio will only change the size of the design. Now, you would use boundary if you had an area like a block that you needed to fit into uh, 
a certain area. The quilt behind me here, all of these blocks were placed with boundary and they were placed one at a time. So when you have a very distinguished area and it has four sides, that's when you would want to use boundary. The next thing we want to talk about in this webinar is markers. And to use the markers, you have to have a safe area set because all markers are placed with the sew head. When you select markers, the sew head will change, the screen on the sew head will change and there'll be a set button on that sew head. When you place your markers, you can place them in any order you want. Uh, you do not have to have four. You can have as many as you need to uh, define your area. And just remember they're kind of virtual. So what they're doing is they're matching up a point on the actual quilt with a point on this layout of the screen. So these lines, these points can be connected and they become stitching lines. So when you create a stitching line, you uh, would it would be cued to stitch. So in order to use it as just for placement, not for stitching, you would have to decue that before you started uh, stitching out your design. Once your markers have been uh, connected together, you can find the center of those markers. When you open up the marker screen, the secondary screen opens up and there's a place to connect and a place to find the center. And once again, just remember this is visual. It's just the corresponding spot on the quilt top that corresponds with the spot on the screen. So how many markers can you use? Well, you can use as many as you need. Uh, as far as I know, there is no limit to them. Uh, markers do not change the shape or the size of the design. You have to do that yourself. Uh, so if you're creating an area and you wanna put a design in it, if it's too small, you have to enlarge it to fit in there. Or if it's too large, you have to make it smaller to fit in there. The markers can be connected and of course that can create a stitching line. So therefore you could use markers to create new designs if you wanted to. So when I was talking a while ago about uh, when you select sew head, this is the screen that you would see on the actual sew head. And you can see there's the word set on it. And then on the right hand side, that is micro move. And remember micro move moves the machine. So if you need to fine tune your placement, you can activate micro move, use the toggles on the handles and move the machine. But also when you have the word set on the screen, if you can't hear that little tick or you can't tell when you've actually activated that set button and engaged it, you can use a toggle. So it, it, it works the same way. So you can either touch the screen or click a toggle. Okay, so let's go over to our um, quilt I have loaded here and we're going to talk about using uh, these placements. So I'm going to change my webcam so that you can see the quilt top that we're working on. And once again, this is not project based. This is technique based. So uh, we're just working with some areas drawn on to uh, a piece of fabric. Now, Julie, you can see my quilt and it's pretty good size on the screen. Is that correct? Correct. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up Qmatic and let me find Qmatic. And here is my uh, Qmatic screen. So you should be able to see Qmatic on my screen now. I just have to get this little box out of my way because it uh, is in my way. So what we're going to do today is we're going to take a look at the uh, the cam screen and once I turned off sharing my screen, oh, I did. And you can see here on this block, I have already placed the design and this is pretty square. And so you can see how it's gone right into those corners. Just imagine those chalk lines would be my stitching lines. But what I wanna do is show you how to place a block in a not so square. Um, uh, block and see how it looks. So I'm going to, I have the sew head on the corner. I'm going to uh, place the design on the screen and let me share your screen so you can, you can know. Okay, so now you can see my computer screen. 
the when you place a block on uh, a design onto the computer screen it attaches itself at its first stitch to the crosshairs of the needle so let me get rid of this okay and let me put it back on there again and i want you to watch for a couple of things first the design starts and ends in the center so it's going to attach itself right here to the crosshairs but watch this grab and drop uh, icon here so i'm going to double click my design and it has placed itself right centered on the crosshairs because that happens to be the first stitch and i know that's the first stitch because there's a green circle under there and a, a line that comes out to show me which way it's stitching but what if i had my sew head off to the side because when i move my sew head it actually moves the design with it so what would happen if my sew head was off to the side say you had just uh, got through cleaning and oiling it well, you wouldn't be able to see that design because it's attached to the needle because there is a safe area defined. But this is your clue right here that you really do have something on the screen somewhere is the fact that this grab and drop is active. So once you select this design and then you move it off of the needle, then you see that the grab and drop is no longer active. So to open boundaries, I have to have the design selected. So I'm going to open boundaries. And don't forget about this question mark here. This is your help. So when you click on it, it tells you the function of uh, what is going on. And if you look right here, sorry, well, if you look right here, it says uh, when you have the control on the sew head, you can touch the set or any toggle switch. OK, so I'm going to uh, click on the sew head. I do want it to morph to fit. And as you saw before, I do have my sew head on the first corner that I want to use. Now, remember, you have to go clockwise or counterclockwise with uh, setting the design. So I'm going to go back over to the machine and I'm just going to click a toggle. And of course, you see nothing on the computer screen right now because you can't have a line if you only have one point, right? So I'm going to click it again. And now you see my first line. And then here is my second point, our third point. And here is my fourth point and you can see that it's it's a not so square square but i want to put this design in here and i want it to stitch out so that it appears to be square so i'm going to preview and you can see that the design has changed in shape and size and i'm just going to confirm that and now i would be ready to stitch we know that anytime we add something to the computer screen, to the quilting area, it is already queued to stitch. So all I would need to do is press start and then uh, we would be stitching. If we go here and look at where my sew head was, is I started stitching it earlier for us and you can see how it goes right into those corners just perfect uh, it's just a perfect fit into those corners now i want you to look at this uh, this border design you see that right there we're going to go back to the computer screen and we're going to create this in cumatic I'm going to turn my screen back on and you should be able to see my um, cumatic now. I'm going to get rid of that by selecting it and hitting the trash can. These pumpkins are part of Amanda Murphy's um, quilting designs. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this pumpkin. I'm going to rotate it. And then we are going to duplicate this one because we need one to go down the other side, right? And then I'm going to rotate this one so that it will go down the left side. So I have all of my components here that I need for uh, my corner. 
So I'm going to use attach, which is part of connect to connect these just in case I have to unconnect them to make any adjustments. But I'm going to select uh, this one. This one starts here. There's your circle with the green line. It ends here. This one starts here, ends here. This one starts here and ends here. So with this one selected, I'm going to open attach or open connect and select attach. I'm going to select the corner and then I'm going to select the other side. So now I have a corner created that I can use to place that border in. So if I were to try to do this with boundary, it, I need more than four points. So therefore, I'm going to use markers. And remember, I said that all markers are done with the sew head. So as soon as I open markers, my screen has changed to that set point on the screen like we saw on the slide while ago. So I'm just going to move the sew head. And I'm going to stop sharing this screen so you can see me do this. So I'm going to put the sew head here and it can touch the screen or I can uh, use the toggle. I have to go around the camera, sorry. <laughs> and we're gonna put a marker right there. We're gonna bring it down here. And all you would be doing is following your border to, to place these markers, okay? And remember, you can use any toggle or you can use the sew head. And then this one over here. Okay, so I marked all of my uh, positions. And now you can see those six markers I used uh, to place that around that corner. I'm going to select connect and I'm going to click one marker two markers, three markers. So I have my outside line because I don't want a line going across. I'm just going to confirm and I'm just going to open it right back up and I'm going to click connect and I'm going to connect that marker to this marker to this marker and confirm. So now I have this area defined that is actually my border and corner. I'm going to place this design up in the corner. Well, it's too large. So we need to resize it. So I'm going to open resize. And because this handle is green, this is the active handle. I'm just going to click on it and move it until that border design will fit into my border. So it's just that easy to set that border into the correct place using markers. The next thing we want to look at is uh, triangles. You know, what do you do with a triangle? Well, if it's a half square triangle, you can use boundary to do that with. If it's not a half square triangle, you would want to use markers. So I'm going to put this uh, not half square triangle on the screen and you can see You can see here on the layout that I have that triangle already stitched out for us. And you can also tell from the picture on the screen that it had to be enlarged. But what we want to work with this time is this half square triangle right here. So it's just a square uh, sewn on the diagonal and this would be the half square triangle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my screen and I'm going to place this design on the screen. I'm going to rotate it to put it in the uh, orientation that I want to stitch. So I want it to stitch in the lower left hand corner of that screen uh, of that block. So with that selected, I'm going to go to boundaries. I'm going to use sew head and I'm going to use morph to fit. So with the sew head active, I'm going to take the sew head. And what I want you to see here is that I'm going to use all four sides of this block. So here is the first one. Here is the next one. And then Oh, my machine's in the way, I apologize. The next one. And then here is 
the last one. And so then, oh, and then when we come back to the computer screen, you can see it's really not really square, but it's not the same size as this. So I'm going to preview and you can see how it changed the shape and the size to fit exactly in that half square triangle. So when I confirm that boundary box goes away and now it's just ready to stitch. So another way to use uh, markers would be on a hexagon. So let's do this hexagon right here. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this hexagon on the screen and uh, I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit using my center zoom. Okay, and you can see how it's this, the orientation's not the same as what I have drawn on uh, my fabric. So I need to rotate it. So I'm gonna go into rotate. I'm going to give it a couple of clicks at five degrees until it looks pretty squared up. I think that looks, I think that looks pretty good. So this is the orientation that my, my hexagon is on my fabric, <clears throat> excuse me. So now I'm going to open markers, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. I'm going to bring my um, sew head over. And so you can see my screen. I'm gonna make a marker there. I'm, oops, I'm gonna make a marker here. I'm gonna make one here. I'm gonna make one over here. I still lack two more. And see how you don't have to go around the app in clockwise or counterclockwise. You can put them on in any order that you want. Okay, so I've made all of my marks on all six points of, uh, of this hexagon. And when we look at the screen, you can see all six of them are there. I'm going to connect them and I'm going to just do one to two, two to three, three to four, five. And there's our hexagon. So you see that it did not change the size of this uh, design at all. It's still exactly the way it was when I put it on there. So if I select this line that I just created, I can see from this lower right hand corner of the quilting area that it's 10.88 inches. So I'm going to select my design. I'm going to go to resize. I'm going to select keypad and I'm just going to put 10.75 and apply in the keypad. And then I'm just going to slide it over into position. And then of course you would go into sew options, you would DQ all because you don't want to stitch that line you created and just cue that design and you're ready to stitch. Okay, uh, let me zoom back out some. Okay, now we have, we have a poll that uh, we would like to take. So Julie, go ahead and put up the poll. And you go ahead and mark your answers. Uh, so that uh, we can see what your answers are. So Julie, are the answers coming in? They are. Okay, I'm gonna close the poll in three seconds. Okay. All right. We have 85% said boundary and 15% said markers. Okay, so what we know is that when you use boundaries, it does change the size 
with both of the options selected, morph to fit or maintain ratio. But with morph to fit, it also changes the shape. And then with markers, we know that you have to change the shape or the size to fit into the area that you need it to fit into, correct? Okay, so just so you know, uh, the workbook, mastery workbooks are now posted on the Bernina USA website or the Bernina website. To get there, you would uh, open up to the home page and across the top, you see uh, some selections. If you go to learn and create, when the secondary window opens up, you'll see mastery workbooks. From there, you would click on long arm and then you would click on learn more. And once you click on learn more, you will see that all three of the mastery workbooks to go with our Q series and Qmatic are available for you to download. Now, I would encourage you to download this and save it where you can access it because there are video links embedded into these workbooks. And when you click on this little area down here where it says click here for video, this video shows you exactly how to set a safe area. So it's going to tell you, you know, make sure both the belts are engaged, make sure both locks are locked, and then move the machine from the upper left to the lower right. And it's going to show you in a video. That's just one of the 20 some odd videos that are embedded into the workbook. Okay. Now, what I want to show you now is I have a few things uh, for inspiration for you. So I'm going to turn off my um, computer screen and we are going to look at the webcam. And I hope you have a I hope you can see this well, uh, because I just want to show you a few things that I have for you uh, to look at today. Uh, a large majority of these are um, uh, blog posts on We All Sew. This hexagon quilt here is completely uh, done with markers, and you can see the placement even better from the backside of it, and you can see how each hexagon is placed, and then of course I used markers to place the ones in the corners, which are half hexes. This is a blog post on We All Sew. The next thing I have for you are some placemats, and this is about boundaries. It shows that you can place uh, those square blocks in not so square block designs, uh, in not so square spaces. So this is also a blog post on the We Also blog. This is a project that is in the mastery workbook for Qmatic. Uh, the squares are placed with boundaries. The wreaths are placed with markers. So a very quick and easy project uh, there. This is a panel that uh, is part of Amanda Murphy's uh, collection of uh, fabric. And the name of it leaves me right this second. But uh, once again, I want to show you the back side of it. And you can see that each block is placed with boundaries. Then to do the border, I used markers. And then to do the outside border, I used markers as well. So just a little inspiration for you uh, to see, uh, to get you started and uh, get you going. So uh, Julie, do we have any questions today? Yes, we have a few. Um, I think that Amanda Murphy collects is that Celestial Lights. Maybe that's it. That could be it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let me put my webcam on here. Okay. And I am trying to get mine on as well. <laughs> okay, cool. All right. So the first question is, and uh, we had a ton of questions this morning. So Please. Okay. Now is the time, everyone, to send in your questions. You can yes. still do that now. Um, and chances are somebody else has the same question. So go ahead and open up your question pane and um, type those into me. The first one is a stitch in the ditch question. Okay. When do you recommend, or when, when would you need to stitch in the ditch? Um, you know, once again, 
if you had 10 quilters in a room, they would have 10 different opinions on this. <laughs> um, <laughs> stitch in the ditch on the frame should be done with rulers. OK, that's the safest, the most accurate way you can do it. And when you doing rulers, you need to make sure you have the ruler base on on the uh, machine to and the ruler foot in order to do that. Um, sometimes stitch in the ditch is not even applicable. The quilt I have behind me here, there is absolutely no stitch in the ditch here. I felt that the designs went out far enough to the seam allowance to the seam lines that there really was no need for stitch in the ditch. And it is a personal preference. I know there are quilters out there that stitch in the ditch everything and then go back and quilt it. It just has to do with what you want to do. Uh, mm -hmm. I personally am not going to do that because I'm going to get it done. <laughs> and so stitching the ditch takes too long for me. It's not as easy as it sounds. And it's certainly not the same process as you would use with a walking foot on uh, your domestic machines. OK. When you did the quilt behind you, did you start in the center? Or I did not. You did not? No, this is this is done on a frame and on a frame you generally start in the upper left and work across and down. Uh, not to say that you have to because you certainly could start on the right and work the other way. That would be fine. But generally speaking, you're going to start at the top and work down unless you're that person that wants to stitch in the ditch the whole quilt and then you're going to uh, reattach it to your frame because then it's going to be too big for the batting bar and then you would go wherever you wanted to if you already have it stabilized with uh, stitch in the ditch. Okay, great. How do I update my Qmatic software? Okay, to update your Qmatic software, you would just go to the Bernina website and uh, there you would see um, the machines, you go to the long arm and uh, then you go to support. And then when you open the support page, I think it says more information. There's a download mm -hmm. button and then there's more information. Um, and that's where you would go to, uh, to update it. And it's real easy to do. You just download it to, uh, you can download it to your Qmatic computer or you could download it to a different computer and put it on a stick and bring it to the Qmatic computer. Then you put it on the desktop. You would run the executional file for uh, Qmatic and it would make a folder on the desktop with any firmware that needed to be done on the machine itself. Okay. How do you decide when to use, or when's the best time to use boundary and when is the best time to use markers? Okay, the best time to use boundary is when it's a four-sided shape, okay? Um, I know that sashing is a four-sided shape and I know that uh, boundaries, I mean, uh, borders are technically a four-sided shape, but I would, I would use markers to do that. And let me show you why. Uh, Julie, mm -hmm. can you see my computer screen? Yes. Okay. I'm going to just take, um, I'm going to take this little pumpkin design here and I'm going to put it on the screen. Let me. I uh, love make those pumpkins. This. <laughs> they are so cute, aren't they? Um, yes. Let me zoom in some on this. Okay. All right. That should be pretty close to the center. Now I'm going to duplicate this because working with, um, and of course it's up there on my needle, there it is. Uh, working with borders, sometimes your borders and sometimes even your sashings are not perfectly straight. So with this one selected, I can go into connect and use attach and, and attach this one. Oh, sorry. And then uh, they're attached together. So if it if your border or your sashing was not really straight, you would unattach these and now you have two start points, right? So you would select whichever one needs to move. You would go into rotate and you would go to start point and then you would adjust this however way, whichever way it needed to go. See how it's moving and you can uh, make up for the in, 
the irregularity in your border. Then once you confirm that, you can go back and attach them together again and not change that that um, degree, you rotated it so that it'll stitch out the way you want it. So theoretically, you could adjust every design down the border or across a sashing. Okay, did that answer it? Yes, yes. Okay, good. Okay, so in your one quilt, you use the hexagon design and then you had in the other one where you use the wreath, there was a wreath <clears throat> excuse me, on a square, but for the wreath, you used markers. Correct. And it's just, and you could use boundaries because I placed it in a block, but in the uh, information in the mastery book, it's showing you how to use boundary and markers. Uh, mm -hmm. And I just wanted to place the markers, uh, use it placing the markers because I didn't want it to change the size or the shape of the, of the wreath. I wanted it to stay really round. Uh, okay. okay. Okay, because the wreath. Okay, cause, so that had to do with the shape. Right, because if I'd have used boundaries and my block had not been really square, it would have maybe even squashed it just mm -hmm. a little bit, you know. Ah, okay. Um, does Bernina have classes, in-person classes to attend when we're allowed to, I guess after COVID? Do you want to talk about your, any in-person classes you might have? Sure. Uh, I personally have uh, two classes right now that uh, we uh, can do in person, and we have small uh, small groups. I can I can only have five right now. When I can have more, we'll have ten because we have five long arms. But the first one is called Exploring Cumatic, and it starts with the basics, and uh, you learn uh, what the icons are, and you create two projects. Uh, one is an edge to edge that's just on a yard piece of yardage of fabric. Uh, because you learn how to design and then how to realign the safe area and set your spacing and all that. The second project is what we call a custom quilted piece. And uh, you actually, on the first day, um, you you create this quilt in class, okay? Because we wanted you to be able to quilt on something that actually had seam lines in it. And then we go through all the rest of the features in uh, Cumatic and you custom quilt this quilt top. So in exploring Cumatic, you are exposed to every tool in the tool center, okay? Then my second class, and you have to have exploring Cumatic or something equal uh, in order to take the second class, which is called Borders and Corners, where we have a panel that has three borders on it and we place uh, designs in those three borders. And that's a two-day class. The first one is a four-day class, and they both are held in Chicago. The mm -hmm. uh, Borders and Corners is also an online class. And then I have another online class coming, uh, I believe, in October or November that would be called the Intro to Cumatic. And uh, it just doesn't go into quite as much detail as exploring Cumatic. Okay. Great. When making borders, or sorry, when marking borders, do you mark as you advance or do you turn the entire quilt? I mark, and in, in the, the class, we teach you how to mark as you advance, so there's no turning the quilt. Uh, of course, turning the quilt, you would get one continuous line of stitching with uh, marking them and stitching them as you advance the quilt, you'll have starts and stops. But our system hides our stops and stops so seamlessly nobody can really tell the difference anyway. Yeah. <laughs> okay, great. Well, thank you, Denise. Well, thank you, Julie. Thank you everyone for joining us today. Remember the recording and the handout will be available on Bernina.com. Go to the Learn and Create tab, and then you'll go to classes, webinars, and recorded webinars. Okay. I hope everyone has a great day and um, that you join us again. Oh, I forgot to mention, we do have future webinars listed on Bernina.com.
um, if you sign up for our newsletter, you will get future um, or you will get emails about future webinars. Also, you can go to our Facebook page and sign up. Um, and then if you want to go to wealso.com, we have lots of information on there about Cumatic, lots of mm -hmm. tutorials. And on our website, we have lots of information on there under Cumatic. Good deal. Thank you. Thanks everyone for joining us and hope to see you again soon. Yes. Bye. Thank you. Bye everyone. Have a great day.